Jessica here, the Ferry Family Coach. And in this video, we're talking about triggering unwanted behaviors in our dogs. Um, real quick before I get started, if at any point during this video, you hear a little nugget that like triggers something in your brain and like, oh my goodness, give this video a thumbs up. Um, if you're watching this live or even if you're watching a replay later on, go ahead and comment below. Let me know um, as we're going through the video, what things you're doing that are inadvertently triggering unwanted behaviors in your dogs. Because if you think about it, even I do it sometimes and I realize I'm doing it and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> We've gotten in a routine and I need to change things up a bit. So if you are watching the video and you're thinking about all the things that you're doing and maybe how your dog is reacting to some of these things, um, let me know in the comments what it is that you're doing that is triggering the behavior and then what is that unwanted behavior. Go ahead and post it in the comments below. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you so much for being here. Uh, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. That way YouTube knows what kind of videos you like and can better suggest videos for you to watch in the future. And if you do like this video, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. That way you will uh, get notified. Actually, you have to click that bell. Hit subscribe and then click the bell and then you'll get notified anytime I post a new video on YouTube. So with that, let's talk about triggering unwanted behaviors in our dogs. So I actually had a group member and if you're not part of the group, check the description um, or yeah, check, check in, the, in the comments, in the pinned comment. I'll post a link to the group. Definitely want to go ahead and join that group. Lots of great information in the group. You can search for past questions and answers and things that I posted. What you got, sweetie? Kim just found something on the ground. What you got, baby? Yeah. Okay. Good job. Good job. So definitely join the group. But in this video, we're talking about triggering unwanted behaviors. And the reason I'm doing this video is today because a group member actually emailed me and said, I am frustrated because my dog knows when I do X, then, you know, I'm getting up. I'm, we're going to go do this. We're going to go outside or we're going to go for, or I'm going to, you know, if I'm putting my shoes on, we're going to, I'm going to go outside. If, I put my glasses down, I'm getting up from my chair. Um, so what we need to think about is not only, not just the behavior that you're seeing in your dog that maybe is unwanted, because we can definitely work on that, but what you're doing to trigger that behavior. So in the instance of this person that contacted me, she said, um, you know, if she puts her shoes on, or you know, she gets her shoes out, she puts her shoes on, her dog knows it's time to go outside. Well, that makes complete sense. And then if she, she said that she, when she takes her glasses off, she's getting up from her chair. So it's time to do something else. That also makes complete sense to me. Your dog has learned your patterns and your routines and what comes after them. So your dog is getting excited for what he know, or she knows is going to come after that action, that behavior that you have just done. So of course, if you put your shoes on, you're going outside. Your dog is super excited to be going outside. That makes complete sense. So what we need to do is change up our routine. Now, this is actually, there, there's a little bit of a caveat to what I'm going to tell you right now, but let's talk about the actual training practices and then I'm gonna talk to you about the caveat. So definitely stay to the end Make sure you hear that caveat that I'm gonna be talking about to the training in your dog because it is so important. And if you miss that, then it doesn't matter what kind of training you do, you're, you're not gonna get the desired results in the behavior from your dog. So what we do anytime we have a situation where something is happening and it is triggering an unwanted behavior in our dogs, we need to look at that something that is happening and we need to reshape that for our dog. So for instance, with the, the woman who emailed me, when she puts her shoes on, it's time to go outside. Got it, understand it. Your dog understands that putting your shoe, the act of putting your shoes on means that they get to go outside with you and they are super excited for that. So what we wanna do is reshape 
what their understanding is of that behavior that we're doing. So we want to take putting our shoes on and we want to change their expectation that comes along with putting their shoes on or taking your glasses off or whatever may be going on in your life that is triggering an unwanted behavior in your dog. So in the instance, we'll, we'll just use putting our shoes on to go outside for an example in this video. So what we would wanna do is go and randomly at different times of day, go and grab our shoes and maybe just set them by the door and walk away. And then maybe at another time, we actually wanna go and put our shoes on but we're not gonna go outside. We're gonna maybe walk a few feet, go back and take them off again and put them, put them back down. And then we do wanna throw in there and sprinkle in there from time to time that you, know, you can't put your shoes on and go outside and that's okay. But what we wanna do when we actually do that behavior to putting on our shoes to go outside, we want to get them to calm down first. And I actually posted a video, I think it was last week, go ahead and you can do a search on my channel or in the group. Uh, I can post, post it in the comments below after this video is done about getting your dog to calm down before we go out for a walk. So we're going to do the same kinds of things. We're going to put our shoes on and we're actually going to wait for them to calm down. And if they're not calming down, then we're going to take our shoes right back off and we may have to cancel going outside and that's okay. Um, but we, we want to get our dogs to the point where maybe putting our shoes on means going outside and maybe it doesn't. And then if it does, you still need to be calm in order to get the privilege of going outside. So we want to randomize things as much as we possibly can. And I get it. Like I'm, I'm one of those people that's like, I have a routine and I tend to stick to that routine pretty well. And for the most part, my dog knows that routine and I don't have a problem with the behaviors that she's giving me in response to my routine. She likes having a routine as well. And all dogs really like having a routine. But when we start getting unwanted behaviors with those routines, then we need to change things up a bit. And we need to randomize things and let our dogs know that they have to be calm in order to get the rewards, right? So once we get to the point where we can put our shoes on and, and our dog is calm and then they get the reward of going outside, I mean, that's the best feeling in the world. So, you know, putting just a little bit of effort in up front to get our dog to understand that just because I do X doesn't mean Y happens, right? So we're just gonna randomize things a little bit. We're going to, um, request that our dogs be calm and we're going to reward a lot when they are calm and when they are doing what we want. Now, here's the caveat to all of this. So I told you just a few minutes ago when I started the video that, I mean, almost no amount of training is going to change things in your dog if something else isn't happening. So this is that something. Your dog's basic needs have to be met every day and this is something so calmness and meeting your dog's needs are both something that i talk about in my book the seven miracle steps i did put a link in the description um if you don't have a, your copy of the book go ahead and grab your copy i highly recommend it to any pet parent out there um they are the foundations of training that i teach all of my in-home clients but we really want to uh, make sure that we're meeting our dog's needs because if our dog's needs are not being met and what I'm talking about is um, letting them have the, phys the amount of physical exercise they need and that's gonna vary from dog to dog and um, some dogs, especially you know puppies, need a ton of physical enrichment in their lives. Um, going for walks, playing, all of these, all of these things that you can do. We also need to make sure that their mental, um, and the, the need for mental enrichment is also being met in our dog's lives. And, and uh, these are things, again, I talk about in my book. Um, so if your dog's needs are not being met, then I fully expect for any dog whose needs are not being met to be more demanding and more forceful with their requests and their demands uh, to have 
to, to play and to go outside and do these things because their needs aren't being met and they're trying to tell you that. So they are going to be more demanding. They're going to be more forceful. They're going to be more stubborn and they're going to insist on things more. Um, and they're going to be... I don't want to say that they're not going to be trainable, but they're going to be less trainable. They're going, it's going to be more difficult to train because they are so super focused on having their needs met that they're not worried about this ancillary stuff that you're trying to introduce to them. So making sure that their physical and mental needs are being met is going to be key to, to being able to get over that hurdle and um, start training and start randomizing these acts and start um, letting your dog know that X doesn't always equal Y and that calmness is what is rewarded. So I don't know if you've heard the term, um, a calm dog is a happy dog, 100% true. Uh, if, if, if you're in a situation where you're like, I just need like an hour at night to relax and calm down and my dog not be bugging me to you know go do this and play, then what I recommend you doing is before that hour starts that you need, that you're gonna sit down and do you know you time, make sure you have walked your dog, you've played with them, you've fed them, they've had water, they've gone out to um, you know do their business and they are exhausted, <laughs> right? So make sure your dog's needs are met and then your needs will be met so much easier. So that's really what I wanted to get across in this video. If you have any questions about that, please post in the comments below. I would love to hear your questions and be able to answer them for you. If you have any questions about any other topic, go ahead and post them in the comments below as well because maybe I'll answer your question in my next video, right? So, um, those unwanted behaviors in your dogs oftentimes, many times, most times, almost all the time, we're actually triggering. So we need to be very super aware of what we're doing and work to, to um, let our dogs know that, one, if there is an unwanted behavior associated with something that we're doing, we're gonna randomize that, we're going to make sure that they are calm before they get whatever it is they're wanting, whatever reward it is, which oftentimes is going outside or playing and, and making sure that your dog's needs are met and they, they are getting sufficient um, physical exercise as well as mental exercise, and you are gonna have a much happier, healthier, dog, calmer dog, right? And in turn, that will make your life happier and calmer as well, which um, I know a lot of people want. So I hope this video helped you. Again, if you're watching this live now or if you're watching a replay later on, either way, post in the comments below. Let me know what little gem you got out of this. Give it a big thumbs up. If you did hear something that really resonated with you, I would love to know about it. Post in the comments what that is. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to my channel and click that little bell button once you subscribe. That way you get notified uh, anytime I post a new video so you never have to miss one. And also it lets YouTube know what kind of videos you like so they can better suggest videos and channels for you to watch in the future. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to post in the comments. Let me know what little gems and nuggets that you got from this as well as other questions that you want answered so I can do some videos to answer those questions for you. I'll see you guys in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you never miss another video.